tonight. Tough decision. India's voters continue to mull over Modi and the opposition as job creation takes the forefront in each campaign. Final push. The US Senate grapples through the hefty aid package for Ukraine, Israel and Taiwan after months of delay. Pricey cuts. Argentina sees mass protests following President Millet's unpopular decision to eat into funding on educational institutions to keep afloat. And breathe easy. Lung cancer detection, prevention and cure just saw revolutionary progress thanks to a new tiny helper. All that and more as World News Tonight starts right now. This is Ava Verna World News Tonight. Reporting from Colombo, here's Anuradhi Vikramasinghe. A very good evening. You're joining us on World News tonight. It's a pleasure to be part of your eve. We have a plethora of key stories to bring to you on the rundown tonight, from the new aid package in the U.S. to the protests in Argentina. But we start off with neighboring India and its election. Prime Minister Modi's BJP and rival Congress parties promise to create jobs in their election manifestos, but differ somewhat on how to achieve the goal and on spending. It seems recklessness would be extra painful for either side this time around. Spending plans in the world's fifth largest economy could impact the government's budget deficit. Modi has pledged to trim it to 4.5% of GDP by March 2026, from 5.8% currently. While the BJP commits to fiscal prudence, it also promises to continue a food subsidy covering 57% of India's population. The calling card for the Congress is social and economic justice. Voters are unhappy about fewer jobs and inequality, and Congress has promised handouts including cash transfers to the poorest households. Its manifesto doesn't mention fiscal management. Whoever forms the next government will be hard-pressed to narrow the budget gap. The conflict in the Middle East is a major risk for India, which is a net energy importer. And to maintain investment and meet the deficit goal, the country needs more private spending. Modi's party is widely expected to win. Whether or not there's a surprise result, profligacy may be costlier than before with more foreign investors entering India's sovereign debt market. Any slips could be harshly punished. The U.S. Senate approved billions of dollars in foreign aid for Ukraine, Israel and Taiwan after months of delay, with lawmakers lauding the bipartisan effort in passing the four bills in one package that also clears the way for a potential TikTok ban. Meanwhile, China urged the U.S. to fulfill its commitment to not support Taiwan independence with concrete actions reacting to the bills. The Senate approved the $95 billion package by a wide margin of 79 to 18 votes. It was a combination of four bills. $61 billion goes to defending Ukraine against Russian advances in its war. $26 billion is for Israel, as well as humanitarian aid for civilians in conflict zones around the world. While some $8 billion will help Taiwan and other countries in the Indo-Pacific, quote, counter communist China. A fourth bill was added to the package by the House of Representatives last week to move on potentially banning the Chinese-owned social media app TikTok. Members of the House passed the combo package on Saturday after Republicans there abruptly ended a months-long stalemate. President Joe Biden has promised to sign it into law as soon as it reaches his desk. Democratic Majority Leader Chuck Schumer called Tuesday's vote an inflection point in history. His Republican counterpart Mitch McConnell expressed regret about the delay. The two leaders applauded the bipartisan effort to finally get the package passed after strong opposition, mostly from hardline Republicans with close ties to Donald Trump. And on more tensions between the two global superpowers, China accused the U.S. of making groundless claims that it was aiding Russia's war effort in Ukraine. For more on this situation, we have other than a world news special correspondent Minoli Zagaria from Kursk in Russia. Minoli? Yes, Anuradhi. 
The remarks come after U.S. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken criticized Chinese support for Russia's defense industry, saying Beijing was the key contributor to Moscow's war in Ukraine through its provision of critical components for weaponry. Foreign Ministry spokesman Wang Wenbin said, China is not a perpetrator of the crisis in Ukraine. It never adds fuel to the fire, nor does it take advantage of the opportunity to profit, nor does it accept blame. Blinken will be in China for wide-ranging talks, including the Middle East crisis, the Russia-Ukraine war, and tensions in the South China Sea. Back to you, Anuradhi. All right, thank you very much. That was other than the World News Special Correspondent Menoli Zagaria from Kursk in Russia. And on the Gaza conflict, it seems Israel has regained its vigor following the Senate bill. Despite Israel withdrawing most of its ground troops from the Gaza Strip, the battle between the Israeli army and Hamas has once again re-intensified. The Israeli military carried out its most powerful airstrikes in weeks across Gaza Strip on Tuesday. A point of Israeli soldiers ordered residents to evacuate, telling civilians that they were in a dangerous combat zone. Residents in the region also said that there had been non-stop bombardments by Israeli tanks and fighter jets. This comes as the Israeli military last week began moving tanks into Beit Hanun on the northeast edge of the Gaza Strip. It's also been nearly four months since Israel halted its offensive in the northern enclave after claiming that Hamas had lost control of the region. Hamas has reorganized its battle lines and restarted its resistance against Israeli forces, firing rockets toward southern Israel. In a video message aired on to mark the 200th day of the war, a spokesman for Hamas said that Israel had suffered nothing but humiliation and defeat. The Israeli military, on the other hand, slammed the Palestinian militant group for targeting Israeli civilians. And now we move to updates on the unrest in Argentina. Hundreds of thousands of Argentines took to the streets of Buenos Aires in an anti-government march against budget cuts to public universities. The biggest protest yet against President Javier Milei's austerity measures. The union-backed marches in the capital are the latest show of dissent over painful austerity measures, part of Milei's plan to undo Argentina's deep fiscal deficit but which are causing hardship in the real economy. A student rally hung banners at the foyer of one of Argentina's most recognized schools, the University of Buenos Aires. While the university has educated five Nobel laureates and 17 presidents, it recently warned it could close soon after getting its budget slashed. Argentina's public universities, like UBA, which offer free undergraduate education, rely heavily on government funding. In recent weeks, Millet has justified the cuts by repeating his claim that public universities are sites of, quote, socialist indoctrination. Argentina has faced inflation nearing 300 percent, but posted a third straight monthly fiscal surplus in March, after Millet's laser focus on cost-cutting since taking office in mid-December. We're going in for a short commercial break now. We'll be right back with more key global updates. Stay tuned. And on the road to the White House tonight, nobody bats an eye at the well-expected results of the Pennsylvania primaries. Joe Biden and Donald Trump both clinched their respective spots. The results provide a window into where voters in the crucial battlegrounds stand roughly six months out from the general election. With nearly 50% of the votes counted, Biden got 94.4%. Dean Phillip, a Democratic congressman who dropped out of the race, got 5.6%. Trump got 79.4% with 33% of the votes counted, while Nikki Haley, who dropped out of the race, got 20.6%. Haley, a former South Carolina governor and UN ambassador, remained on the Pennsylvania ballot after dropping out of the race in March. Primary voting in the state is confined to registered Republicans, locking out the independent voters who faced her. her results show that a number of Republicans continue to be unhappy with Trump. Biden also faced challenges of his own in Pennsylvania. A group of progressive activists have run a campaign to encourage Democrats to write in uncommitted to protest against Biden's handling of the war in Gaza.
And over in the UK, we see more defence preparations with an increase of spending in the department. Along with this, British Prime Minister Rishi Sunak said that Britain will deploy Royal Air Force Typhoon fighter jets to Poland next year to enforce Polish air defence. For more on this, we have other than the World News Special Correspondent Clifford Pereira from Yorkshire in the UK. Clifford? Yes, I'm right. Standing alongside his Polish counterpart, Donald Tusk, during his one-day visit to Warsaw, Sunak added Britain was also deploying over 16,000 British troops to Poland as part of the NATO exercise Ted First Defender. Earlier, Sunak said he would increase Britain's defence spending to 2.5% of GDP to reach 87% per pound a year by 2030. Sunak said Poland is spending more of its GDP on defence than any NATO ally in Europe. And with today's announcement, the UK will be spending more in cash terms than any NATO ally in Europe. Sunak will also be discussing security in Germany. Back to you, Anradi. All right, thank you very much. That was other than the World News Special Correspondent Clifford Pereira from Yorkshire in the UK. Still in the UK, an unfortunate update to the Rwanda situation now. Five migrants, including a child, died in an attempt to cross the English Channel from France to Britain in an overcrowded small boat, hours after Britain passed a bill to deport asylum seekers to Rwanda in a move to deter the dangerous journeys. The deaths occurred after a small, overcrowded boat carrying around 110 people tried to traverse one of the world's busiest shipping lanes. Stopping the flow of migrants is a priority for British Prime Minister Rishi Sunak's government. The controversial bill would allow the UK to send asylum seekers to the African nation rather than letting them stay in Britain for processing. Human rights groups and other critics say the bill is inhumane. But Sunak on Tuesday said the government was acting out of compassion, wanting to prevent people smugglers from pushing vulnerable people out to sea. The first deportation flight to Rwanda in June 2022 was blocked by European judges. Britain's Supreme Court then upheld a ruling that the scheme was unlawful. It argued that migrants were at risk of being sent back to their homelands or other countries where they might face poor treatment. And over in the Korean Peninsula, we see yet more tensions. Kim Yo-jong, the powerful sister of North Korean leader Kim Jong-un, said the country will continue to build overwhelming and the strongest military power to protect its sovereignty and regional peace. Kim Yo-jong pointed to the U.S. military's exercises around the Korean Peninsula this year, particularly live fire drills with the, quote, South Korean puppet military gangsters as making the security situation in the area dangerously unstable. While Washington and Seoul claim the drills are defensive and conducted regularly to maintain readiness, Pyongyang insists U.S. military exercises are preparations for a nuclear war against it. Earlier this month, the North's KCNA news agency reported Kim Jong-un saying, now is the time for North Korea to be more prepared for war than ever. Let's go for a short commercial break now. More world news right after this. Welcome back. We have some exciting developments in the medical field to report to you tonight. A new ion bronchoscopy robot allows doctors to navigate the lungs with a virtual map produced from the CT scan and provides a real-time view as it navigates the breathing tubes of the lungs, potentially transforming the landscape for detection, treatment and prevention of lung cancer for the better. Doctors hope this robot can help produce safer and more accurate lung cancer diagnoses. With 125,000 people in the U.S. dying each year of lung cancer, according to the National Cancer Institute, doctors agree that early detection can save lives. But when a patient's screening detects troubling signs such as nodules, a biopsy may be needed. The robot is thin, so it can actually get to um, a lot more branches than we currently can with our current bronchoscopes. The robot allows doctors to navigate the lungs with a virtual map produced from a CT scan. During the procedure, it provides a real-time view of the lungs as the catheter enters the breathing tubes. It also helps doctors determine how far the needle used in a biopsy can be safely inserted without causing a lung collapse, Sider said. We can put markers in to help the surgeon cut out less of the lung uh, than we would traditionally. Uh, 
Um, there may or may not in the future be ways that we can treat lung cancer from the inside um, without having to send patients to radiation or surgery. But it certainly is a relief to hear that we can expect even more safety and comfort when it comes to something as daunting as cancerous diseases. That wraps up our bulletin tonight here at World News. Join us again tomorrow for more key global updates. Thank you very much for watching. Have a good night.